welcome to another episode of the series where I'm showing different Avalon harmonics modules that I've designed. This time round I'll be talking about Nucleus. It is one of the modules I'm most proud about and it's basically a Geiger counter in a module. So in this episode we will see what it does, what you can do with it, some patches, etc. So let's start. First of all you can see it right here on our screen. It's 8 HP in size and it basically only has outputs and one of the most prominent features it has is its Geiger Miller tube in here and it has a nice little alcove for placing some sort of a radioactive sample. So let's see which parts of the interface there are. First of all we have a switch the switch can be used to turn on and off the passage of the click from the Geiger. And we have three outputs. So what are these outputs? The first output here, trigger, is basically the trigger that's fired each time that there is a click on the Geiger counter. And then we have a gate output, which is a gate of a certain duration that we can set using this knob right here. A gate is generated each time there is a click, and if there are multiple clicks in succession, they are basically forwarded, or rather extended. And the third output is the inverted gate, which is basically the inverted of the gate. If the gate is high, this is low, and the, if the gate is low, this is high. So we can use this to let some sound through or something like that when there is no clicks for a while. So let's see how this works and what we can do with it. To start, I'm going to patch my ADSRs here into the trigger. You will see that for now it's not really doing anything, although you will see an occasional flash on this LED. Maybe you've seen it. Yeah, there we go. There was one and another. It's already reacting a little bit to background radiation in the room, and that's to be expected and by itself it won't do anything until we flip the switch. So let's flip the switch. And we wait a bit for the first click. There we go. As you can see, each time there is a click, it will trigger an ADSR, which will let through some sound, in this case, a chainsaw. I already have a melody of chords going into it, so it's generating something each time it clicks, basically. As you can tell, on background radiation, it's the clicks are relatively rare, but they do happen. This will obviously vary depending where the synth is located. Different parts of the world will have different speed of clicks. For instance, I have a slightly higher number of clicks closer here to my window, just because it's closer to my granite window stills. Okay. Now we can increase the number of clicks using a radioactive sample, and I have a few pieces of uranium glass right here. So I'm gonna put them right here inside the cell code. As you can tell, this already dramatically increased the number of clicks. Let's observe how the gate is behaving. So, the way how the gate works, you might have noticed the LED on it as well. After there was a click, it keeps it open for a while and then closes it again. With this knob, we can set so that it's a relatively short time, like this. As you can see, it fades out almost instantly together with the trigger. We can set it to a relatively long time, like this. you will now see that it stays up for quite a long time. 
We can use this for various sorts of things. One good example is that we can make it so that if there's multiple successive clicks, or rather triggers, it doesn't play back like multiple um, sounds, for instance. So if I plug it here into the gate, you will see that it only plays back a sound the first time there is a trigger after a while. Pretty convenient. Now I will switch the... Actually, another thing that I can show is that... I will also do it the other way around. This is how the inverted output works, for instance. Since the inverted output is inverted of the gate, it will play back a sound once the gate is unable to be re-triggered. So once the gate expires, it will play back a sound because the inverted output has gone high at that point. There we go. Okay, now I will rewire the patch a little bit and we will see how else we can use the setup. Okay, I have done some changes to the patch. In this case, I am routing the output of the gate into my log x module. I don't think I will be showing this module on the stream because it on the video because it is relatively simple. But what it does is it is a logic gate module. So in this case I'm using an end gate on it. And I'm combining the gate signal of the nucleus with gate signals from my keystep pro controller. And it's basically playing a sequence of notes. And once there is a click, it will be playing a sequence of notes. And once the gate expires, it will stop playing. So let's see how this looks like. There we go. Pretty nice and convenient, right? If there is a lot of clicks, it will prolong the gate, basically. That was another example. There's some more things we can use this for. So let's try wiring this around and see what else we get. Okay, now I have connected the trigger output going into my R and F module, which is basically a rise and fall, um, rise and fall uh, smoother. Let's call it basically a slew limiter. So what it does is each time there is a trigger, it will create a sudden sharp rise of a voltage and it will slowly drop over time. And the output of that I am routing into the popo filter, which will basically cause a nice little cut off drop each time there is a click. So let's hear how this sounds like. As you can hear, each time there is a click, there is a sharp increase in cutoff of the filter, and then it slowly falls down. Creating a nice little randomly generated flow of the sound. You never know when to expect a sudden, sudden rise in cutoff. This can be quite useful for 
some sort of a self-generating patch. Try something quite different. We could plug this into the inverted. Now each time the gate expires, it basically tries to climb up in the cutoff. Sometimes it has enough time, sometimes not. Also experiment with both up and down. And make it slew both ways. I've showed you a few different patches of what you can do with this and I think it'll be pretty useful for use in some sort of a generative patch where you want to achieve some sort of randomness. Hope you like this video and I'll see you around to show you some other modules. Bye bye.